Okay everybody, this is Ross, and today's video is actually gonna be really exciting. I'm excited for it, that's for sure. Um, what you guys are looking at here is my plums and my apricots that I have. I have a number of plums actually that are spy aid against the fence over there. Uh, but the rest of them, in terms of plums, pluots, apricots, they're all right here. And I have them planted in a really dense Dave Wilson nursery backyard style where I've got, believe it or not, like four trees in the same hole. That's four right there and four right there and three in this hole. And they're all sort of growing in their own different direction. And it's been a challenge to prune them. Um, also, I originally had these in pots. So we planted these last spring in the ground. And years before that, I had them in pots. And I wasn't training them um, as if they were an in-ground tree. I was training them for pots. And it's a different way of doing it. And uh, I regret the whole thing. I really should have just put them all in the ground from the beginning, to be honest with you. Had the right form from the beginning. And I'd be saving myself a lot of time, energy, effort. Uh, but I think this is a nice teaching moment for you guys. We did a video talking about pruning these stone fruits um, pretty recently. And I decided uh, the whole objective of this year was to get as many fruits as possible because I'm not going to be here in this property forever. Um, if I have to correct the form for a year, it may not pay off in the long run just for the duration that I'm here. Um, so it's kind of a, a more of a, a short-term plan rather than a long-term plan. But I've realized we have a lot of flowers that are popping right now, believe it or not. I'm actually seeing on this apricot here, I have white showing now on the flowers. And I would expect these trees to be in full bloom in a week. Um, we're expecting really warm temperatures over the next 10 days. And to me, uh, what that is telling me is that the chances of me getting a lot of fruit off of these trees or any fruit at all this year is probably gonna be unlikely. So rather than um, use this year as a chance to get as much fruit as possible, I might as well just correct the form, you know, um, because the, the chances of a, a late frost coming in and hitting all these flowers I think is pretty good. So we're gonna come in here and correct the form on these. Even though we just did a video pruning them, this is gonna be, I would say, the, the better way to do it. We talked about in that video, basically cutting them all down to your knee, is that when you get them as a single stem whip, as actually I have some over here, these are young trees that I got from uh, a friend of mine, and he grafted them himself. He got some rootstock, young rootstock, and then they grew to about yay high, and I actually chopped them down to my knee. But what I'm gonna be doing with these two over here on the end is actually grafting um, some apricot variety that I have that I really like. It's called Early Blush. It's the one actually over here, this guy in the back, which is also showing its pink flowers. This one has uh, pink flowers, and the apricot over there, Tomcot, on the end has white flowers. And I really do like this uh, early blush, simply because it, um, it really does taste like cotton candy. It's kind of insane. So I'm gonna fix the form now. I think that's um, pretty reasonable. And again, I wish I could come in here to all of them and chop them all down to my knee, but I'm gonna come as low as I can. That's really all it is. It's just coming as low as I can and getting these, um, these scaffolds here to form at a lower height so if you cut it down at your knee, you get the scaffolds to form about here, and you get as many of them as you can, about five or six or seven. Um, and then from there, the fruiting branches start to form, and you can pick the fruit up here at a reasonable height. But the fact that a lot of these trees have just not been pruned all that well from the beginning, they were never chopped back, the, the canopy is forming at a much higher height. And therefore, they're gonna be larger trees and that's not something I want, and uh, probably the, the next person who takes care of these trees isn't gonna want either. So I think it's a good idea um, to just fix this form. So uh, this one, I'm kind of unsure of what I wanna do with it, but I'll tell you right now, on this apricot here, 
And you know what's nice about this is that I can really see where all the fruit is as well. So let's say I wanted, to, you know, again, to have some fruit. Um, now I'm at least seeing where the fruit's at in terms of these flowers. And I can make maybe a better bit, a uh, better judgment here. But this, I'm basically just taking off the entire top of this tree here. I feel like it's better late than never, right? Man, that didn't come off very well. I got too much of the bark that came off with it. So that's a bit unfortunate. I may have to come in here and make a better cut later on. But uh, I'll leave that there for now. Let's move on. This in the back is a very poorly pruned. Uh, this is either Santa Rosa or Satsuma, Japanese plum. And I'm just gonna basically pick a height and just chop this back to that height, uh, which I'm gonna say is about right here. Whoa. There we go. So I would recommend a saw, guys, for this larger stuff. And for the thinner stuff, you just come in here with the pruning shears. I'm definitely struggling, unfortunately, with the saw right now. I don't know why. Um, I'm also gonna cut out some of the stuff that's growing towards the center, because these trees are all in the same hole, right? So I've got some that are growing out this way, some that are growing out only this way, and some of them are growing out only that way. And if they're growing towards the center, that's only gonna promote disease. Um, on this tree here, this is another one that's really poorly formed. This is the Santa Rosa here. So this was the Satsuma. Um, and we're gonna basically just chop this back all the way to here. And it's so much growth. It's really unfortunate. But in the long run, especially if I'm not gonna get fruit, guys, this year, these are gonna be much more productive trees. I mean, look how much wood I'm just taking off. It's like an entire tree. Really is a shame. This guy, I actually like the form. We've corrected this already. There's some fruit down here that has potential. So we're gonna leave this. I'm gonna bring this back. And uh, this whole section over here, that's kind of weird. I can show it to you guys. That's gonna have to get removed in the future. There's some dead wood here I'm gonna take out. But for now, I mean, I might as well leave it, right? If I am gonna get fruit, that's awesome. That way, at least I have something here to show for it. And, you know, it's kind of like a mixture of the two, you know, between completely correcting the form here and um, getting myself some fruit. It's kind of a mixture of the both. Because if I can help it, I want some fruit, you know? But, I can't predict the weather here, guys. And this guy on the, on the end is coming out towards me. Um, I like this branch. I like this branch here. Again, we're just taking off the top. I'm going around to do this on every tree, guys. No surprise. All right. I think I can leave this tree alone. Um, I'm gonna take this out, this long branch. That can come out. This is my Pluot here. This is a Flavor Supreme. And it's sort of already growing in this direction, which is nice. It is a bit high, um, so I guess I don't really see a great alternative you know, branch for sort of taking over. The, the trees on this section here that are growing towards us need to be a bit taller than the trees on the other side, just because of the way the sun comes around. Around noon, the sun comes around this tree 
uh, during the growing season. So um, I definitely want on this side the trees to be a bit taller to be able to get some of that sun at noon. Um, although, you know, maybe it shouldn't matter because it is noon. All right, let me see here. This guy, we're gonna take out this completely. And also that, I think. We're just gonna leave this bottom scaffold and this bottom scaffold here. That's kind of the idea with these trees, the way that I'm doing it. When you do it this Dave Wilson nursery style, you know, when you have, you basically just wanna grow a whip to a certain height and then get it to scaffold out in the direction that you want at the right height that you want, and that's it. All right, perfect. Man, it's sad, you know, because I, I wanted a lot of this fruit this year. But it's, you know, it's already March 5th or something. Yeah, March 5th, guys. And they're gonna be in full bloom probably in the next seven days. Uh, I think that's just too much time. This I'm gonna take out for sure. You know, this is the tricky tree here that I'm not entirely sure what I wanna do with. But uh, what I could do and what I should do is take this entire thing out here. Um, but maybe I will just take, yeah, I really should just do it, huh guys? There's no fruit on this anyway. There's no potential for fruit this year. What is this tree? This is my green gauge. I really would like to try some gauge plums, guys. Um, they're supposed to be very different than other plums. I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna come in here and take the entire top off. And that's it. We'll leave this scaffold. It's not the prettiest scaffold in the world. But uh, that kind of solves our issue here. This tree is sort of dying. It's a peach and uh, the bark got all messed up on it. Something got to it. And uh, it's probably not gonna survive this season. So, but anyway, I think that's the pruning here, guys. I'm gonna show you. You know, what a difference in the height of these trees. And this is the tallest one now, I guess. And I could potentially take this back, you know, even further. I just don't know where. Where on this tree should I cut it back to? You know, it comes out here in a Y. Um, this would make a really bad scaffold because it's growing towards the other trees. And then the rest of these branches, I mean, I guess this would make the best new scaffold branch right there, but that's a little extreme, I think. Um, so I'm not gonna even, maybe I can come in here and take this out because that's growing towards the other way. Um, maybe this could be the new scaffold in the future. So maybe next year I'll correct that tree. Um, if you come back over here on this side of the early blush apricot, you can see this whole thing, this whole system of branches. That's got a decent amount of fruit on it. Because of that, I don't want to get rid of this whole system thing. I did take out a lot of it, um, but it isn't really hurting anything just yet. It is going to get in the way, you know, over here because we have a, one of these branches just coming off. So I guess I will just take that out. Why not? And hopefully this top part here gets its act together on that apricot. All right, let's do the grafting right now and show you guys this demo of the graft. Um, these I'm grafting into early blush down here. And that's about it. Um, there's not much else to say. These are like, one of them is a rootstock. There's nothing on it. The other one's a variety that I think is probably a bit disease prone. So I'm gonna graft uh, this early blush variety onto it, which you may think I'm a bit nuts because why would I graft more apricots, right? They're blooming too soon. And I would say out of maybe, I don't know, you know, um, maybe three, two out of five years, they're probably not gonna fruit for me. So why would I graft more of them? But uh, they're so darn good, these apricots guys. They really are. It's just become one of my favorite fruits. Um, here's a graft right here, by the way, on this tree. 
that my friend grafted. I'm gonna graft above this, um, probably around here. And then this tree, I'm also gonna cut this back quite a bit to about there. And uh, I can clean this up maybe a little bit back here. Just some dead, dead wood over there. I can take care of that later. All right, we'll take our knife. We got our scion here, that's good. Now we could, if we really wanted to, could wrap this scion before I start grafting it. But, uh, you know, everybody's got their own way of doing things. I'm just gonna do a cleft, by the way, guys. I've got a number of videos on how to do a cleft graft at this point. Um, I think you guys kind of get the point. Plus, you know, how many grafting uh, videos can somebody watch, right? But this is all kind of, you know, the duties that you have in the spring. You know, things that you guys may want to may do, may want to look into. We're just going to get this straight on both sides. That's it. I'm gonna shorten this just a bit. All right, and then we're going to, you can see that there, guys, on both sides. Nothing crazy. I'm also going to um, shorten this here to about three nodes. That's all you really need. You know, if you, if you got more nodes, you got yourself, let's say, this long cutting in here, it's got a pretty weak center of gravity, gravity and it's probably going to break off. And then for this, I'm just gonna unravel this so it's not in my way. And then I'm gonna come in here, make the slit for the, uh, oh, that was a lot easier than expected. Whew, I thought that wood was gonna be a lot harder. All right, so maybe I should make another cut Yeah, I'm gonna make another cut here, guys. That was pretty ridiculous. Uh, I could even go further down and not use this as an inner stem, because that's what I have here, is that I have a rootstock, an inner stem, and then an, I would put this apricot on it, but I don't really need the inner stem. It's a pretty low graft, but uh, I don't, I don't mind low graphs, actually, and this isn't really all that low, actually, you know? It's not really all that low. Actually, it's pretty high. Um, all right, that's much better. Take my time with this instead of rushing it. <clears throat> all right, we've got good contact. Perfect contact. I don't even have to rubber band this, but I will. This is kind of the fun part of growing fruit trees, guys, and having different varieties, is that you can just come in here. If you got yourself a bunch of trees, really experiment with different varieties and have them all on the ground, and you can come in here and just graft different stuff. And it's kind of the fun of this, really top work some things, I, I kind of wish I did that more on these uh, stone fruits and the apples and things. We did apples last year. I didn't do a whole lot of graft. I'm not gonna do a whole lot of grafting this year, especially as the amount we've did in the past. Now we've got my parafilm here. This is so, so important, guys, for any orchardist, let me tell you. I feel like if you have fruit trees, this should be in everyone's arsenal of tools. And that's how I see it, is like, a, is like a tool. And I'm just basically stretching it and then wrapping. And this is just, you know, as most of you know, this is just gonna keep that moisture in there. It has so many uses, I find, in an orchard. This tree tube behind me, behind it, is really getting in the way. 
But you really do want to stretch this. I, I want to stress that point. And that's it. <clears throat> that's a graft. And the tree broke bud, right? That's another key point here, is that the trees have broken bud, both of them. And uh, that's it. This is actually here like a perfect match in terms of uh, diameter for a cleft. So that's cool. We'll make a new cut on the bottom. <clears throat> nice clean cut. Come down in here. I'll tell you this, guys, grafting is a lot of fun. Um, really is. Give you guys maybe a better view of what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm slicing away from myself. You know, you gotta get a little deep in here. Get yourself a sharp knife. It's always recommended, man. You don't wanna go too thin with this. Thinner it is, kind of the and the if it's really weak, flimsy growth, uh, it's not very hard. It's gonna break. So uh, what I like to do, is sometimes I go a little too thin, and then I'll take off a little bit off the top, and that just makes it a little bit stronger in terms of that breakage point. Um, and then we'll make our again our slit into the rootstock. That's perfect. Come on in here. And you know what? The, uh, that doesn't match up all that well. It's got a good width to it. Pretty much perfect width in terms of the diameter here, but I'm gonna still put it on a slight slant I don't really like the contact on this side. It's pretty weak. You know, on the other side here, it's, it's uh, well, it was perfect. So I'm gonna slide this in even further, I think. Yep, I have to come in here, guys, and uh, I got one side of this, which is just thicker than the other side. Yeah, you have to bear with me here. I haven't done grafting in like a year. It's just one of those things you don't forget, but yeah, it's like riding a bike, but at the same time, I'm not gonna be as good as I used to be without some practice. All right, so that's perfect. Yep, it's a better contact for sure. That's what I'm looking for here, guys. The cambium to the cambium contact. Otherwise, what the hell am I doing, right? Gotta have that. Here's our excess rubber band from the other one. I'm gonna do this one a bit tighter than I normally do because I want that better contact on this. Normally, I don't do them as that, that tight because the rubber band can actually girdle the, uh, the graft, and that's really not something you want to do. <laughs> so. All right, come on now. Okay. And we're done. That's it guys. Just coming in here with the uh, parafilm. Hopefully you guys got a decent view of this. And, you know, again, this is sort of like what you can do as a backyard grower or any grower. Get yourself some trees, do some grafting, get different varieties, figure out what you like, what does well here. I'll tell you this, I do wish I had an apricot variety that bloomed a bit later and was disease resistant and very tasty. Um, maybe there is something better than this early blush, but uh, I fell in love with this apricot um, this past season. 
incredible. And then, you know, this will take uh, probably, maybe not instantly. We may need our temps to warm up a bit before this will totally take. But, you know, I'm in no rush. So I wanna thank you guys here for watching this one. It was a nice uh, little view, I think, into what you guys can do. Uh, clear your mind. I think it helps clear your mind and keep you guys, um, you know, focused. It's sort of, sort of like a form of meditation, pruning and, and grafting. Um, yeah, I've been really busy lately, so it's nice to come out here, I think, and do this after work and uh, kind of reset my mind a little bit and do some of this uh, work that seems to really bring me back to, uh, to a nice place. So again, keep your trees smaller, guys, in the backyard setting. Um, can't stress it enough, all right? We'll talk to everybody soon. Take care and check us out on Fig Boss, Facebook, and Instagram. Subscribe, hit that bell button, guys. If you got it this far, you might as well hit that bell button, all right? Take care, everybody.